डेट Yeah. Uh, I think that you still have a small font, but hold on, let me open this up for you. And then make it bigger. Now it looks good? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so uh, actually there is a, some of the technical problems. So I cannot really try to try to do something that I wanted to do. So maybe I had to, but I had to do that anyways. So <clears throat> okay. Hello everyone. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna try to cover the chapter four, like a Terra package. So which is another package that is introduced in this book. And then I actually never heard of the Terra package before, but because I just kind of using the SF pack SF package, or before then there was a kind of a some of the first first generation of the special statistic or special analysis. Packages in R, like uh, such as SP packages and some RGDAR or GIS tools or GIS map mapping kind of tool. And then this one is a more like a integrated kind of things to, to allow us to create and manipulating and processing both raster, <coughs> excuse me, raster and vector images. So in here, it actually says about the, it is a function, has a function to create the read, uh, create read, manipulate and writing rest and vector data, right? So that's the how it works. And then we're gonna try to cover how those things gonna be possible by using the Terra package. So in case of the rest data in here, in Terra package, there is a function called rest this is the just kind of a basically about the, uh, how I can say in a raster packages, there is a kind of a, a read RGP or read raster kind of raster kind of function to, to, to read the raster. But the thing is in, in case of the rest function in here, raster function actually allows us to the, both create and read, read the raster data, as you can see here, right here, right? And then write raster is kind of a, just kind of a creating the data, like a export the that the, the rest of data as a TIFF or some other kind of a raster image data set. Usually TIFF file gonna be the file extension for the raster file, right? And then I, I, I think that you already know about the definition of the raster images cause the raster images, raster is a kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a one of the one type of the GIS or some of the special data uh, type that allows us to the there is actually uh, one fixed uh, there is actually a fixed unique grid and then each unique grid has a value like a, which is the attribute so of the single value and then what is the good about the rest images unlike a vector images rest image has a unique grid and then that unique grid gonna uh, the attribute or variable or value embedded uh included each grid gonna be allows us to the some case of some a kind of a calculation uh between the between or across the rest of images if you have a same resolution and then the same grid cell sometimes or Maybe it might be okay. Maybe if you even if you, if you do not have any, do not have a, a same type of the grid cell, maybe you can you can uh try to manipulate the one of the one of the those one of the two rest images by doing the maybe aggregate or disaggregate the 
uh, rest file. And, and then so that we have a same grid cell size and then you know, that actually allows us to the calculate images between the rest of images. So uh, as you can see here, there is a library we have to import and then uh, we, by using the path raster, uh, maybe let me show you the, maybe screenshots, you can see this one and then you click the terror packages and then you can, you can reading the this file and then uh, by using the rest function that actually creating the data type called the rest file. And then when you're plotting R, you will see, you will see the uh, rest images in the bottom, bottom of the screenshots. Okay. This is how it looks like this. Okay. And then also we can use about the rest function to create the deathpad rest object. Because a deathpad rest object is a kind, kind of a unique data type, data class type for the Terra packages. Because they actually custom, they actually customize it, customize it and define the, their own objects, which is the spat raster. So that rest image is gonna be allow also allows us to create the rest images by using like this, like a because uh, like I said, rest image is uh, defined as a kind of a set of the grid, unique grid cell images. So what we can do is uh, we can do about the number of columns and then a number of row. That's the, how we can define, and then that actually allows us to the kind of a square, square or rectangular like uh, image sizes, like a uh, number of column is 10 and number below is the uh, 10 means we gonna have a 10 of a And then we can, we can also set Uh, for the that boundary or that uh extent, okay, that's the how you can define and then it looks like this, and then you can also <clears throat> check out the how many rows or how many columns and set the dimension and set ourselves, and then by using the value function you can actually access to the those values to the rest like a one through the n series r means you. This one is actually try to store the only values through the one through 100. That means we're gonna try to extract the only value from the dead rest of images and then saving it, or maybe assigning of those things. Set or access, then that's the what it means. And then also we can also create the multi-layer object by using C. So that means like a R2 is a kind of a uh, this one is actually what My God, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear now. You were uh, gone for you... a while. Yes. Okay, so you you missed something, right? Uh, only Be where for... you? Yeah, it was only for uh, ten seconds or so. But I've seen that Federica uh... has left. Uh, we're only two. Yeah, by now. Yeah. yeah. So both both of maybe that Federica 
and I actually disconnected <laughs> due to the some connection problem. Do you want me to wait? Uh, or do you want us to wait, the uh, Patricia, about one or two minutes? Uh, we can, we can uh, perhaps wait. Uh, indeed. Yeah. A little bit. A little okay. bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, because mine always, sometimes without any reason, I have a, some of the problem with the connecting. I don't know why that things happen. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, but... Your camera is off, you know. Okay, so now you 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 can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Federica is back. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, may I uh, may I may I continue? Okay. I think that. Maybe just a couple of seconds. You you do not hear this one. Like uh, how we can set the access the value. So, like uh, by using the this value value function that actually allows us to the set or access to the value. So that means that uh, it allows us to manipulate those things. And also when we try to create a multiply object, that is a very simple. Like a back it it Terra. What is the good about the Terra package is is. All, all of the this calculation is uh, quite like a vectorized kind of approaches, which means in here, R multiplied by R means you have a same rest of images. Each cell gonna be, each uh, each cell corresponding to one another, uh, each other, those gonna be, those value gonna be the multiply, and then uh, that's the result. And then, and then by using the DC function, like a background images, and then you can just uh, simply, simply creating the multi layer like a two two set two two raster images as a as a layer, inside the one layer or inside the one last image file, and then you can also subsetting with uh, these two, that this 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 bracket double bracket actually seems like a, uh, if you can just try to access to the each of the layer as a, like a like a list class object in R. You're just thinking about that. Okay. And then and then also there is a lot of generic function because uh, as I can say, what is the good about the rest image is the rest image has a value for the each unique grid. And then that each unique grid allows us to the a lot of uh, calculation or algebra kind of things. Like uh, overlay kind of things or maybe uh Plus, uh, uh, like a, like a product which is the multiply, and then divide or, or add, additions, addition and and subtraction, those kind of things, and also intersect kind of things also kind of possible, but is about that is also good about the some of the spatial statistics algebra. So, this one is a kind of a plotting mean s and you know r plus ten is a. Just kind of simple calculation, okay. After the these kind of last calculations, you can get the sum of the plot and minimum. Minimum is just kind of get the minimum values or round, or just kind of plot for the r equal one. Like a, each unit grid has a one unit. Uh, it, it may be just kind of a rest image for the, of only for the grid cell has the value of one. Oh, kind of things. Okay. And then another part of the good about the Terra packages is the Terra package also manipulate, create, and and read and write about the vector data, which is the quite interesting to me. Because uh, usually before the statistical analysis, like uh, for SF packages, SF package only can be possible to the special kind of objects, but back to the, but uh, special kind of objects and then the raster, there is actually separate package called the raster uh, kind of a packages that allows us to the access to the raster. But 
in this one is actually combined together and then uh, only importing the diesel or tera package only a uh, one tera one packages we can allow that actually allows us to the access to the both of them so uh, this is also the same thing like uh when you reading this one like uh this one is actually try to try to get the path and then a vector vector back function gonna be allows us to the reading the that file actually this in here this argument actually represents for about the whenever you just the detonating the that file file and then where that file is at that 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 path uh path character uh, path argument gonna be allows you to open and read and writing those files okay and then you can also see this one like a uh, longitude and latitude and then a C bind for the as a database uh data frame and then CRS points like a WGS84 like a coordinate system and then setting up the this data frame and then you can also create the object by using the this GPS uh this latitude and longitude you know kind of information and attribute going to be the this data frame with the place and value which is the these two attribute and then a CRS is going to be the WGS 84 so that's the how you can create the spec what you call the spec vector object like a vector vector based kind of a special file and then and then it's a uh, very simple to plot so maybe let me I think they much better to show you here so um, okay the term here then when you when you click here you can see the these are the kind of a attribute property like a, which is the spec factor and then dimension is a four by two like a geometry and attribute and then the extent is a uh, y minimum max kind of thing like a setting up the desk shape by boundary and then a coordinate system is a wgs84 and then when you're plotting that you will see that these kind of a little dots gonna be show up okay and then and then x axis is a kind of like a x coordinate like a longitude and then the design the right to and then this is actually north thing all the things and then this is the east thing kind of a coordinates okay so that's how it works do you have any questions so far anything i'm just wondering um whether it's a good idea to create rosters in a uh, geographical uh, coordinate reference system because uh, uh, here uh, we have the we yeah. have longitude latitude which is not yeah. constant distance yeah, yeah. right so i and think then, it's uh, uh, better to do uh, it in a projected um coordinate reference system uh but compared to the raster that's why you why you think no well um okay well we were talking about oh yeah it's yes it's, I'm, I'm confused it's 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 true of course for the vector it doesn't matter so much and especially for points it's uh for the raster that i meant um oh. that is maybe a bit of a problem um because oh. usually for mm -hmm. raster you uh, you assume constant distances uh, across the grid uh, which is not a case yeah. when you create it in a geographical coordinate reference system which is often done in the examples actually in the terra package uh, anyway but i'm not sure about i uh, maybe uh, even that holds for the example file i'm not sure about that i yeah, but I think, uh, for example, okay. the S, the elevation, mean. yes, the elevation uh, geotiff is also in uh, longitude latitude WGS. Yeah, 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 right. Because in here, as you can see here, 
And when you're looking at yes. the x-axis yes. and the y-axis, there is this also also has the coordinate system and then a location like a latitude and longitude data is actually already embedded. And mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, you are right. Cause uh, usually what is the, actually, there is actually plus and con about the using the raster images. Cause uh, raster images allows us to give me the, some of the very uniform kind of a grid cell size. As I said, that actually allows us to a lot of a calculation. Like uh, for example, by using the, app, you, if you have a, a lot of a set, set of the raster images, with the same grid cell, same resolution and same region. Maybe for example, one is the environmental like a wetland information and then a river or some some kind of a all different kind of a geography information. And then by using the overlay to do that, to by set up the one equation in, in my area, like uh, which is the urban planning area or geography kind of a perspective, this rest image allows us to the identify the which one is the more suitable rent for the future development, like uh, what is called the rent suitability analysis. That when we try to do that, actually overlaying these kind of rest images by using the set of the one single equation, that allows us to the calculating the what is called the su land suitability score. And then based on the that score, we can actually map out to the which area is gonna be the more feasible for the for future development based on the geographic conditions. That is the like a, one is a good typical application of the rest of images by using that. And also you are right, because it is actually uniform images. But in reality, when we are looking at the okay, when you're looking at the looking at the city, all the puzzle has the might might have a different sizes, right? Sometimes that actually has a kind of a problem. Like when we rest the image, always try to get the get the value based on the unit grid. That unit grid does not match to the actual geographic uh kind of a shape, okay? That kind of a incompatibility actually has the problem about the how we can try to uh, extract the more useful and more uh, valid data set from the reality. That's another, another uh, that is I would call about the disadvantage of the rest or some of the challenge, I would say about the challenging challenges about the do that like uh, within the that uniform unit grid how we can define the value depending on the value we want to aggregate or disaggregate that might be the problem but the thing is the rest of image is uh, a little bit much easier to disaggregate and aggregate function once you have a value good value significant good value of the each grid cell Okay. I yeah. think that that might be a yeah, good explanation. So that might be the answer to your question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think because it's Luxembourg, it, it, it doesn't matter that much because it's a quite small area, but it would be yeah. especially a problem over large areas because then, yeah, the, the length in meters of one minute uh, distance on uh, an ellipsoidal coordinate system yeah it's not the same uh, in the north uh, and in the south for example because uh, yeah yeah right yeah that is also the same problem because like uh, for example in the united states it's a big and then uh usually in that cases in that case we do not try to get try to analyze in the rest of image about the u.s country by itself because it's the too big you know because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh Maybe if you if you can imagine that the, you're gonna be try to try to create the rest of images based on the maybe for example one hundred meter by one hundred meter unit grid for the U U.S. continent, maybe that data size is huge. Yeah, yeah it is course. more than the big data, and then uh, and then uh, it actually are are takes forever to import the that data. 
okay, because yeah. it's a too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so usually when we try to do the these kind of raster images, like you said, uh, we usually try to do the some of the very small sub area with the same coordinate system that shares the same coordinate system, and then calculating some raster uh, data processing. Yeah. Okay. And then the vector data is a kind of a how we can do this like a this, and then actually it's a very simple. Actually, what is one of the key part of the this chapter is the this one like a cropping and masking and aggregating the rest of data. So cropping is a just kind of a cutting to the rest of images based on the another vector or raster image file. And then the masking is a just kind of intersecting or those kind of things and then combine or those things. So Terra package actually allows us to do that. So Terra package and then you, when you try to do this one, like a, it looks like a, some of the spatial, spatial temporal rest images that seems like a, uh, presenting some of the monthly average, average temperature. So this one is the January, February, March, April, etc. right? So like, like I said, this one is what is called the spatial temporal kind of a data set. And then when you try to do the mean, which means what is, when you combine all of the, these things by using the mean value, like a, each grid has the mean value, like a calculation of the average of the average monthly temperature throughout the year. And then that's the, how we can, you can plot it like this as a one single rest of images. Okay. Because this one actually, a lot, this one actually possible because of the, like I said, each grid has a, their own value and you know, that corresponding value gonna be calculated, easy to calculate. And then also if you have uh, some other things is you can, Try to masking function and then comparing the all ball, all value outside the middle of the NA. Maybe let me let me run this one for real key. How it look like? Okay. And we will we will try to. Uh, I have to install the death packages like our natural earth. <laughs> okay. And then it cropping means it's just kind of based on the some of the some specific shape file, vector shape file. Rest images can be cropped based on the that sh uh, shape of the that uh that shape file kind of a shape. <laughs> I would say, okay. And then aggregate function is a kind of a, what is called a combining it. So, uh, how I can say, it? Uh, like uh, here, maybe I think that when you have uh, maybe this kind of a unique grid, one, two, three, four, and then maybe if you wanted to try to aggregate this one into the one big raster, maybe you can you can do that for that by function of mean, which means one plus two plus three plus four divided by two, uh, divided by four, gonna be the 2.5, gonna be the value for the that big images through the function of mean. Okay, that's the how how it how aggregate function try to do. So that is actually good thing about the rest of images. So it is a kind of a kind of a easy to aggregate to the value based on the based on the some single easy functions like a mean or mode or maybe other thing like a medians or 
or those kind of things cannot be possible. Or you can also set up to your own function in here, like by using the function uh, command, okay? So that's the how it looks like. So it's, it's this one, as you can see here, because uh, this is actually very high resolution kind of a file, but, but as you can see here, you can try to try to aggregate by aggregate the some of the some of the rest of images. You can get the, this kind of a little bit low low resolution kind of images when necessary. Sometimes it is actually necessary. Like for example, this is the shape file, right? And then each each district has a kind of a providence of the that country, maybe Spain, for example. And then uh, I wanted to combine the one monthly temperature by the these regions. How you can do that? You just combine combine those rest values based on the this shape file, and then average them. That's all. That's actually give you. Uh, give you to get the these kind of images or even to give you the these images like the average temperature okay based on the that based on the that rest image uh rest images value that's the how aggregate works okay I think that I explained quite quite everything <laughs> right now. Do you have any questions so far? Anything to add? It's clear. Thanks. Okay. Any any other comments or anything? Let me okay. Yeah. So actually as I said, Terra Terra packages uh I, I actually never you never I have never used the Terra package before. I I looking at the, this chapter for today, but I think that Terra package is uh, quite convenient for me to you know to using it because uh, it is uh, it is it looks like a very tidy kind of a uh, functions. Terra uh, Terra package provide the quite tidy function. It is also easy to use because the argument is quite simple. And then it is very easy to plot, which means it is very easy to visualize your result once you have a very good REST image file. And then it is also easy to creating about curating or define the vector and REST images. And also Terra package, if in case of the REST images, Terra package also has the providing the function for the calculation of the rest of images. So that is the very, very convenient factor because uh, before that we actually using the reading or manipulating for the asset by using the asset packages. And then uh, we have to have uh, another package for the rest of package. And then uh, we actually separate importing the two or three packages to uh, to do the this kind of task, but in case of the Terra package, actually integrated all together inside one single package, I think that that's the one good good. I think that that is a kind of a good big advantage over using Terra packages, yeah. and also, yeah, yeah. yeah. and also so... when you, sorry, yeah, oh no no go ahead, uh yeah Terra can also use as F objects. Uh, oh, could you say again? Um, Terra can also use objects of the SF package, so it can combine. Oh, yeah. oh, it okay. can combine its own raster objects with a vector object uh, from the SF package. Okay, and then also when you go to the that Terra, uh, packages like a site, and then go to the this URL, you can see the their package web page. And then there is also a lot of a tutorial that you can use, and then you can feel free to, uh, dive or uh, dive into the this one, and then uh, see how it looks like like in in here. 
it is also has a kind of a things about how you can do the vector data, rest data kind of things. Yeah, as an example. Okay. Yeah, like this. And then the rest of data manipulations. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. This one is actually example from this tutorial. So, and then, yeah, you can just feel free to check out, okay? This, uh, this one, I can share the link into the chat. And then, I 